Praise the Lord. It's time for another podcast of the prodigal son. This, this once again, Ephesians 1, 15, is my prayers for all of us, myself and you, that the eyes of our understanding would be opened. Ephesians 1, 15, ever since I heard of your strong faith in, in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Now Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator, of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Not all glory, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. That is my earnest prayer for you that God would open the eyes of your understanding, that you might know and comprehend what what God has in store for you, what he has in store for all of us, if we'll just believe his word. Now, let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, we praise you and we thank you, God, for your word and all the truth that's in it. Guide and direct me. Use me for your honor and your glory, and I'll forever give you all the glory and praise for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be taking my scripture today out of John, the 14th chapter, in the first verse. You know, yesterday we talked about putting unbelief out of your, out of your life. And I talked about people that, that sometimes you have to separate yourself from for a time to, uh, to get your, your faith built up and your strength built up in, in what God can do instead of, you know, just allowing things over and over and over to, to, to mess you up when you start listening to a bunch of, you know, doubt and fear and unbelief coming out of other people. But, you know... A lot of times, you know, more times than most, I find those thoughts that come. And and people, yes, people feed those thoughts and they, they strengthen those thoughts. But we have to, before we do anything, we have to cast down those thoughts. And you say, well, I, I, I can't do that. Yes, you can. And I'm going to give you a, a scripture that says you can. John 14, 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Christ said, 
don't let your heart be troubled. Well, if he said don't let your heart be troubled, you can allow your heart to be troubled. And and I know without a shadow of a doubt over the years, I have allowed my my heart and my just my being period to be troubled beyond beyond help a lot of times. Why? Because I was standing on my own strength. I was standing in my own power instead of standing in him. But glory to God, I can I know who I am in Jesus Christ. You know, John 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you unto you, that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said this. Jesus said this. He said, these things I have spoken unto you, that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I, I didn't know that a lot of years. I didn't. I had no idea that the joy of the Lord was my strength. Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we have got to understand something. That if we'll operate in Jesus Christ, you know, you say, well, he said he overcame the world in John 16.33. Absolutely he did. But we're in Christ. What does 2 Corinthians 5.21 say? 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, says, For he who, let me read it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to look it up and read it. I'm not going to mess it up. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him, who is he? God has made Jesus Christ, him, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. So that's telling me that I can operate in him. I can be the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God in him. Why? Because he is my Lord and Savior. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm telling you today, there is a way to overcome this, and that is operating in Jesus Christ. Don't allow Satan to put thoughts in your head. Now, I'm going to tell you how, what kind of sociopath Satan is. He'll put a thought in your head, and then when you act on that thought, he'll condemn you for that thought. Now, that's, that's, the, kind of, that's the kind of dog that he really is. That that he would get you in a position and and put something in your head and then feed that thought and then condemn you like it was your own thought. But I'm here to tell you right now that you don't have to let your heart be troubled. You don't have to live in fear and and, and anguish and anxiety all the time. You can cast all your cares upon him. Who is him? On Jesus Christ, because he cares for you. That is a blessing to know that. Glory to God, a blessing to know that he is there just waiting on you to give, give him everything in your life and allow him to carry it, allow him to, to guide and direct. You know, I told him over at the jail, I said, who was, who was or what did Adam and Eve do in the garden? I told them, I said, they didn't have a, a worry in the world. Everything they needed was right there. That's how we're supposed to operate in this world today. God has made a way for us. He, he, said, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. If I'm not mistaken, that's Matthew 6. And if you'll look and understand that, that if you'll seek God in His will and His in His way, He'll make a way of everything else. You ain't got to you ain't got to worry about how you're gonna pay your light bill. But why? Because God will take care of it if you will first seek Him and His righteousness. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't ever allow un unstable thoughts and. And, and unbelieving thoughts 
come into your mind. Cast them down. Cast them down. Put them out. Don't allow the devil to trip you up. But look to the Lord for guidance in every direction. If you've never been saved, be born again today. If you're away from God, repent and come home to him like the the prodigal son did. Look to God today. If you've never been born again, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Glory to God. Be born again today. Let not your heart be troubled another day in this life, but cast all your cares upon him and allow him to lead you and guide you and direct you and put you where you need to be. Won't you let the Lord Jesus Christ be Lord of your life? Allow him to strengthen you and to show you that you may have problems in this world, but he said, I I show you this, that you might have peace, my peace. Glory to his name. His peace is what he wants you to have. It says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Get in Jesus Christ. Accept him as your personal savior. If you're saved and away from God, come home to him. Allow him to be what he wants to be in your life. And that is Lord today. Glory to God. If you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. We want to hear what God is doing in your life through his word. Allow God to be a light in your, in your life. Allow his word to guide you and direct you in every aspect of your life and watch things change. Go to our website and let us know what's going on. Let us know what God is doing in your life through his word. If you've been born again through this podcast, contact us. Let us know. Let us hear from you. We want to hear from you. We want to hear and know what God is doing in your life through this podcast and through his word. It's the-prodigalson.com.